Hello YouTube viewers. Um, in this occasion I am going to try to show you how to align your telescope but using a wedge. It could be a uh, professional wedge uh, like the ones they sell at Celestron or it could be one of those homemade wedges that uh, you of course do yourself like the one I have. And this is specifically for the Celestron 6SE or 8SE. Now I have to note that uh, this alignment, or this precise polar alignment, it's uh, only valid for the uh, handheld or go-to versions at 4.18 and above. Okay, anything that it's before that, it, it requires a different procedure that, uh, that I don't have at this moment right now. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, the first thing we have to do is, of course, uh, we have to have our mount. Our mount has to be all set up. We try to have it all uh, level on the floor, and then after we do that, then you're gonna get your wedge. Okay, um, this is the wedge. Okay, of course this is not one of those uh, uh, factory made. This is a, a, a homemade wedge, but uh, this is the platform of the wedge, and then this is the the board in which uh, your telescope is gonna be mounted. Okay, uh, now you've probably heard uh, a million times that depending on the latitude that you're on is how you're going to set up your wedge in order to polar align it. Okay, there's one thing really important to know. Let's pretend by one moment that we are right at the polar north. Okay, I mean right at the, at the north pole. We're right there. So if we're at the north pole, then we are at 90 degrees. Uh, related to the equator of the earth. That means that our wedge has to be set up at 90 degrees. But, one second. 90 degrees from this platform should be something like that. Okay, something straight up. That's 90 degrees. But, because you are at the North Pole, then Polaris is not going to be that way, straight that way it's going to be straight up so therefore 90 degrees on your platform should be like this your wedge should be like this and the telescope should be set up like this of course right now I am at a, at a location which is in Indiana uh, at 40 degrees that pretty much sets up the telescope or the wedge at this at this height okay this is 40 degrees 40 degrees from a vertical stand to the bottom. If it's from the bottom to the top, then it would be 50 degrees. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing, but you will get the hang of it. Okay, so once we have that set, um, we're going to go ahead and mount or, or put that wedge onto the onto the mount. Okay, your wedge, your uh, your board, which uh, is going to contain the telescope, is going to have to point north. For me, north is that way. Okay, so bear with me here. I'm gonna put this wedge right there. Second one. In order to align our Celestron 6SE or 8SE, we have to go through four different steps or parts, as they call them at Celestron.com. Um, the first one is the rough alignment, which is pointing your wedge to the north and also point on the board that holds your telescope up in the sky 40 degrees or 50 degrees whichever it is on depending on the location on which you are okay the second part it's called equatorial alignment it could be from north or south depending on where you are uh, and then the third part is called polar alignment the sec uh, the fourth part is going to be again the equatorial alignment and I will explain to you as we go into this why is that Okay, so right now I have a, a rough alignment. Uh, so the second part is, of course, mount the telescope and point the telescope up to the north. So we're gonna do that right now. And uh, we're gonna skip a little bit and I'm gonna come back once uh, the telescope is up on, on the wedge over here, okay? Okay, we're back. Um, this is our telescope already in the, in the mount and already in the wedge okay so what we're going to do of course we're going to turn it on and then we're going to start the process of aligning our telescope according to 
what the system is requiring. Okay, the first thing, of course, you're gonna press enter, and you're gonna choose the form of alignment that you're gonna be using. In this location, it's gonna be equatorial north aligned. You're gonna press enter, and then it's gonna ask you for the hour. For the hour, of course, you're gonna try to use something reliable, something that's like more accurate for a, for a, for time. Right now, it's 5:56 p.m., which is 17:56:00 hours daylight savings yes right now we are currently under daylight savings and then you're gonna punch in your location you can punch in whatever city whatever uh, place you're on or you can punch in your exact location now if you want to do a precise polar alignment I would recommend that you put in actually your latitude and long longitude into that machine so that way it knows exactly where you are and your tracking is gonna be more accurate that way Okay, it's already in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and put enter. I'm going to go ahead and type in the date. Today is uh, August 2nd of 2012, and then there we go. Uh, the second part, or the next part, is going to be uh, what kind of alignment do I want? Okay, the telescope is going to be uh, asking me what, what sort of alignment I want. Of course, right now it's daylight. I don't have any stars behind me. The only star I have right now is the sun. So. I can use the sun if I want to, but for purposes of this uh, demo, we're going to use the automatic align or equatorial auto align. Okay, so um, we're going to be doing that, and um, once you do that, you're going to have to set up your telescope to the index. Okay, self so set the out to index. So we're going to do that right now. And the only thing that means is that. Uh, those two little arrows that you have, one on the, one on each side of your, of your motor, you have to be aligned with each other. That's that's all it means. Okay. So we're gonna do that right now. So that means it's gonna do, uh, it's gonna put the telescope at a 90, 90 degree uh, angle uh, related to the to the base of the telescope. Okay. We're getting there it's right there right now okay and then I press enter and it's gonna have uh, another request it's gonna say find meridian what is that okay right now behind me I have the North Pole right there is the South Pole so the meridian for me is going to be an ima imaginary line going straight from south all the way up to the north so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place telescope pointing right at that imaginary line. For me, of course, sometimes you have to place yourself behind the telescope. It's right there. Okay, that's the meridian or, or meridian line. Okay, uh, uh, pardon my pronunciation on certain things. Um, so you press enter on that, and then the telescope is going to choose two bright stars. Of course, I can't see them right now, but right now it's choosing the Vega. So if I hit enter, the telescope is going to go ahead and slew straight into the sky and, and to find that star. Okay, so let's wait for the telescope to go ahead and do that. Notice I did not take the cap off the telescope because I don't want it to be pointing accidentally to the sun and then uh, have it damage or damage my sight. Never look at the, at the sun without a proper filter. Okay, so now it is supposed to be pointing to Vega. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep on going with that. The first thing you're going to do is try to find Vega through your uh, finder scope. Okay, Celestron already comes in with some sort of a finder scope with the red dot but my recommendation is to upgrade to something a little bit uh, bigger or something that has a little bit more magnification so you have more accuracy on pointing at stars so um, I, I got one of this it's a, uh, it's a finder scope that it's uh, 8 by 40 so it gives me pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, magnification and, and, and a way to find stars for me and it also has a, a cross, a cross uh, hair inside there and then you can also attach um, 
a light, a red light, so you can see that crosshair uh, uh, really bright uh, at night. So let's go ahead and attach this here, okay? <clears throat> I am going to pretend that I am looking for Vega. So I am going to be looking for Vega right here, okay? And then once you do that, because that's the first thing the telescope is going to ask you to, to look for it through your, um, through your uh, finder scope. Once you do that, you hit enter. And then once you do that, um, of course, the telescope is going to ask you to align that star not through your finder scope, but also, also through your um, eyepiece. It doesn't have an eyepiece right now, but um, you will go ahead and look through your eyepiece and start moving the telescope back and forward, up and down. And then once it's already aligned, you're not going to press enter. You're going to press the button that says align. Okay, there. Now, the second star is going to be prompting up over there. The second star, according to this, is going to be caster. Caster is going to be prompting up, and then if I hit enter, this telescope is going to be pointing or looking for that star for me. Okay? Remember, we're still at the first step. I mean, the second step, which is the equatorial alignment on this. Um, and this is an uh, automatic alignment. It's just going to be looking for these stars. And uh, well, it's a little bit far from, from the first one. The farther they are, the better it is to, to, to pinpoint um, accuracy, to get more accuracy on, on to, on to where those stars are. Okay, it looks like uh, it's done, it's in. So, next step, once again, because of the, this second star, it's probably not center onto my uh, finder scope. I'm gonna look through the finder scope and align it according to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and move it a little bit, wiggle it. Okay, and then I'm gonna press enter. Once I do that, I'm gonna refine my search or refine my centering on that eyepiece. Once I do that, let's go ahead and move it a little bit and pretend that I'm looking through the eyes, uh, eyepiece. I'm gonna hit align. And then, of course, uh, this is gonna read alignment successful and then turn off your uh, star pointer which is the 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 this uh, crosshair that comes in with the celestial okay so now the telescope according to specs according to celestial it's already aligned it's already polar aligned with our wedge and with our stars okay so you can pretty much point or ask for any star right now and it will go ahead and point to that star it might not be accurate it might not be perfect but once it points into there then you just have to center it on your on your uh, finder scope and then look through the through the eyepiece this is perfect if you're just going to view the night sky but if you want to do something more accurate like uh, photography uh, astrophotography or something like that or, or if you want this telescope to keep track of those objects for more than uh, 45 minutes or something like that then you have to perform steps number three and steps number four which is the polar line and then step number four which is once again the uh, equatorial alignment okay so on step number three this is where it gets a little bit tricky okay in order for us to do the polar alignment uh, or polar, polar line um, on this particular version we have to point the telescope or aim it into any of the stars that are below the equatorial imaginary line that you have there or pretty much your celestial equatorial line it has to be below that so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and uh, point the telescope down there to any of the stars that uh, that you want to okay you don't have to know the name of that star because once you point to that star there's going to be another process or another step that, that will help you know what that star is. So let's go ahead and point into... Okay, there. There's a star over there. I don't know which one is it. Okay? Right now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to explain this before I do it because it's something a little bit fast. Um, I'm going to hit menu. I'm going to go all the way up to identify and then hit enter and then I'm going to choose named stars the 
handheld is going to start going from 0 to 100% to, to, to find the nearest star that the telescope is looking at right now. Okay. At this time, or in this occasion, this star, it, according to this, it's called Algorav. Algorav. A L G O R A V. Okay. So that's the star it's pointing into. Okay. If that starts being pointing into the telescope, then the next step it's really important. Once you see this on the screen, you hit enter, and the telescope's going to start repointing or re slewing up onto that star. But before it can finish, try to do it before it can finish, you have to go and press undo all the way up to the main menu. And then once you get to the main menu, then you press align, you choose polar alignment and then after that you choose align mount I'm sorry I forgot about that one so once again before it finishes slowing into that star that you're pointing into beneath the south uh, the south of your equator then you hit undo all the way to the main menu you hit align you look for polar alignment and then you you look for uh, align mount okay that's how you do it so I'm gonna do it right now I'm gonna hit enter I'm gonna go all the way up to the menu and then hit uh, polar line and then polar line enter and align mount okay if you notice the telescope is gonna do that again it's gonna go back somewhere and it's gonna go back to that same star now your handheld is going to give you certain instructions. The first instruction is going to be to find that star with your scope, with your uh, finder scope. So you go ahead and look for that star through your um, finder scope, which is this one here, up, up, up above. And then you hit enter. After you do that, then you align that star onto your eyepiece with this okay so far we're using this okay so we're gonna go ahead and, and align it and now it's already synced to that star Algorov okay now the next thing is to choose to press undo I'm sorry to press enter to continue to the steps don't press undo after you uh, realign that star with your handheld then you're going to uh, press enter and the telescope is going to try to once again this is the third time flew back onto that star but this time you're not going to touch the handheld do not touch the handheld and actually it's going to tell you right there it's going to tell you do not touch the handheld the star should be r somewhere around the telescope around your uh, finder scope so what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the adjustments of your um, edge in order to uh, get the start centered onto your telescope once again do not use your handheld okay so I'm gonna point the camera a little bit lower so you can see something you're probably not seeing right now okay there's a knob there's a knob here on this wedge of course I have to release my telescope right here I have to release the platform once I release it and while I'm doing this I have to be doing it while I'm watching the finder scope okay I'm gonna go back and forth back and forth until I find that star onto that finder scope once I do that once I uh, adjust it uh, not only up and down but also sideways which you can do with this with this uh, wedge once you find it onto your uh, finder scope um, you're gonna go and start doing the same thing with the eyepiece still not touching your handheld okay once you do that and let's say I went through my eyepiece and I started moving back and forth up and down and that starts right center onto that eyepiece then I can go ahead and tight my wedge whichever kind it is uh, and then tight all the, all the all the knobs all the 
all, all the different uh, bolts and everything, tie them up so it won't move, okay? Because that star, it's already centered. That means for the telescope, for the system, that you're already aligned with the polar north, okay? So once you're done with this, you have to finish it by putting or by pressing enter. Okay, and it says polar align complete. What does that mean? Okay, let's go back up a little bit with the camera. It means that your telescope has been already polar aligned. Not only to watch the sky, but to precisely track whatever star, whatever nebulae, or, or, or whatever planet you want to. It's already been aligned. Okay, now there's a fourth step. Why do we have to do a fourth step? Well, because we've already moved a little bit the wedge back and forward and up and down, then we have to realign the telescope with equatorial alignment, okay? That's just to uh, pretty much seal the deal or, or, or seal that, uh, that, uh, that alignment to make sure it's completely accurate. How do we do this? Really simple. How do we normally align this? Well, we turn it off and we turn it on. That's it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly that. Turn it off, turn it on again, and then uh, once again I'm going to start pressing enter, and then I'm going to choose uh, equatorial north align. I'm going to punch in my hours, uh, make sure I got the same hours here. Now it's 6 12 p.m., which is uh, 18 12. Daylight savings, yes, we do have daylight savings, and then uh, I have my location already done. Uh, the date still the same, and then we choose what we want to do. Do we want to do equatorial uh, auto align, or do we want to do uh, solar system align now that I'm watching the sun, or do we do a two star align? It all depends on you, it depends on how experienced you are knowing your sky, knowing your stars. If you don't know them very well, well, we'll just go ahead and choose out of line, okay? Once again. And then once again, we're gonna put this back onto the onto the basic uh, form, aligning those two uh, index lines and aligning onto my meridian, okay? Remember, it's gonna ask me to, uh, first thing is set alt to index, enter, yes and then find the meridian. I've already found my meridian, enter, and then once again it's going to ask me for some stars. The first one's going to be asking me for, guess what, it's Castor. This time it's not Vega anymore, it's Castor. Well, the telescope does that, it chooses different stars. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter. It's going to slew onto that star. Of course, at this point, you don't have to move your wedge at all, because it's already precisely aligned with your polar uh, star or if it's in the south with the with the south pole okay all right so now it's already uh, pointing into caster once again we're going to repeat the process of looking for caster on my uh, finder scope we're going to look for it and then once we find the finder scope center on that uh, crosshair enter and then we're going to center it on the eyepiece once we do that center on the eyepiece then we're gonna hit align. The second star is gonna ask for Vega. Okay, let's go ahead and have it go to Vega. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit. And that was my dog, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, so the telescope's now slewing up to Vega, the star. And um, while this is doing that, I need to tell you also if you have any questions, I don't know everything. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put your comments. Make those questions or, or, or ask those questions through comments or, or, or messages that you can send me. And I will make sure I answer those to the best of my knowledge. Of course, if I don't know it, then I will do some research and try to answer it. If not, I'll just tell you I don't know. Okay? So right now, it's pointing into Vega. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to look through the uh, finder scope and uh, make sure it's already center and then uh, we hit enter and once we do that then we're going to center it onto the eyepiece once again we're going to center it we're going to move it uh, move it up and down uh, left and right and then hit align 
once it's aligned it says align success uh, turn off the pointer star and then your telescope is now ready for not only watching stars not only uh, tracking your, your your solar system or your sky but also for astrophotography of course it would be better if you have one of those um, um, auto guides I don't have one of those but this is very accurate so accurate that if I point into a star and I go inside my house and get a cup of coffee or something like that and I come back in about I don't know 45 minutes one hour one hour 20 minutes believe me that star is still gonna be centered on that eyepiece um, it is very accurate and once again if you have any questions please don't hesitate to put any comments down here all the comments are welcome positive and negative uh, constructive uh, criticism is always welcome to see how I can get better on, on things and, um, and and thank you very much and of course uh, for for some of you that have asked me uh, why don't you all, uh, upload some of these uh, videos that you've taken with your digital camera with your webcam or something like that um, I'm gonna try to put some of these um, uh, videos or some of these capturings uh, uh, right next to this video. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, and, and um, I hope you have clear skies. Thanks. Bye.